Hi, everyone. This is Matt Stevens and Aline UAE, United Arab Emirates. And we're here for Learning Together. Uh, it's at learningtogether.net, one possibility, learning with a two in it. And um, we're talking here with Ali Bostan Gioglu, who has done some research on the Webheads in Action community of practice. We've all been eagerly awaiting some inkling of what he's been doing. So he's going to show us uh, a little bit about the results. These are preliminary results. He's, uh, uh, I'll let him tell you about the study. But anyway, um, Ali is uh, from Turkey, but he's in uh, York at the moment, University of York. And um, he's been conducting his research. Uh, should we just have the people say hi? Most people's microphones are working. Yeah. We just got a couple of people here. So we've got uh, Jose, Rita, Teresa, and Michael. Maybe you could just say hi and where you are and why you're here. Hello, Hello everyone. everyone. This is Teresa in the Lisbon area of Portugal. Glad to be here. Hi, Ali. Hi, Teresa. How are you doing? Glad, glad that you made that. Hello, Ali. Uh, this is Rita Hello. from Argentina. Hello, everybody else. Hi. A pleasure to be sharing this uh, session with you and listening to your findings. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Hi, Ali. Michael here in Adelaide, Australia. Good to see you again. Yeah, it's Hello, Ali. This is Jose here in Brazil. Okay. It's great to be here with you and um, hear about your findings in your uh, research. Thank you. Hi, Jose. Thank you for making it. Thank you, guys. Okay. Um, should I should I start yeah. then? Can yeah. I know? Okay. I'll, I'll eager to hear what you have to say. Oh yeah. Thank you. Well, <laughs> uh, I got some things to say, but uh, it needs to be built up on later on. But yeah, let's get started. Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, th thank you very much for everyone who came today. Um, uh, familiar faces, I will say, now that I have been <laughs> with you for a while. Um, Lance has already given introductions. Um, so, okay, um, I will, today, I will try to um, talk about my aim in undertaking this uh, case study of web heads. And uh, then I will also touch on why I decided to choose Web Hats as a case study, uh, what this study involved, and uh, the focus of today's session is going to be mainly about uh, the findings from the interviews. Um, so to continue, I'd like to briefly talk about sociocultural learning, learning theory, which, uh, which looks into learning uh, as a social practice. Um, so, um, sorry about that, just a second, I'm checking my notes. Sorry guys, I'm really unprepared today. I do apologize for that. Uh, so the main basis, this is that learning is a social process that occurs through interactions, and there are three main uh, theories about uh, that relates to the sociocultural learning theory, which is situated uh, learning that you might have heard of before with communities of practice, Lawe and Wenger's study, and then there's distri distributed cognition, and then there is activity theory. Um, so all of all these three theories are parallel and they are all rooted in the sociocultural learning theory. Uh, but I have decided to use the activity theory uh, for my study because uh, because it includes um, because it includes and provides me with an analytical framework for analyzing how learning occurs, occurs in social and individual levels. Um, so to give you more information about the activity theory, it's mainly uh, in, in this, as you can see in this diagram, it's uh, a triangle that consists of uh, six uh, components, which are the subjects, in my case, WebHeads members, 
each one of them were the subjects. And the activity they undertake is uh, is participation in this web has in action online community of practice. So each subject has a motive, has an aim that they want to realize, and that guides their activity, which is the object they want to achieve. And they do, they do achieve it with uh, tools that are provided. So the tools can be abstract, such as the language, but also uh, the platforms, like the Blackboard uh, Collaborate we are using at the moment, can also be considered as a tool that allows uh, interaction. Um, and as a result of uh, this activity, there is an outcome which many members, uh, I, I won't be touching up that much uh, on this today, but uh, there is an outcome of their interaction which people mentioned as that they learned, they learned about how to use technology to summarize it. And then because this is a learning within a community uh, and it's social learning, there are these, at the bottom of the triangle, there are these three sections, rules, community, and division of labor. So each one of the subjects put together, they create the community. And I looked into who the members were in the Web Has in Action community. And then there are rules. Well. For web hats, uh, rules, people thought of it as a really strong word. So a culture or norms of the community, we can say, uh, that requires the activity. And then there's the division of labor, which uh, how members take different roles in this community. So to continue, um, any questions so far before I continue to the results? Uh, that's really nice that you stopped and allowed questions. I suppose if anybody wants to ask a question during the presentation, you could always raise a hand and uh, we might see it. Yeah. And you can write it in the text chat as well, your questions. But anyway, one question, um, uh, maybe you'll come to this, but how do you determine who is a webhead? Um, so what I did was, that's a good question. So I remember, uh, because uh, the main tool, the main interaction tool in the web has community is the uh, Yahoo group, and it requires registration. So as far as I know, anyone who registers there uh, can be considered as a web has member, and I have shared a link uh, which I will later on talk about, but I have conducted a survey and uh, I only shared this link within this Yahoo group and nowhere else, sorry, and also the Facebook group and Google Plus group of the Web Has in Action. So any person who is following these uh, three group, Web Has in Action groups, I think I consider them as a Web Has member. Is that clear enough? Yeah, and that's that's fair enough. Uh, those are the ones that you would be able to quantify. That is, they, they have registered members in all three spaces, and there yes. might be other people who might interact with us and consider themselves webheads, perhaps, but maybe not be um, members of those three groups. Okay. But you wouldn't really know how to find them, you know. So that's, so that's, that's a fair. True. I think a fair. Uh, yeah, that that sounds like a good way to measure it. Okay. Uh, okay. Anybody else have a question? Hello. Teresa wants to know if we have a webheads page. Yes, we do. Let me. Uh, oh, by the way, there are two of them. Remember, there's the new webheads group, which you want to avoid if you can. That's uh, James O'Reilly's group. Yes, there is a confusion. I'll put the link in the uh, text chat while Ali is continuing. I'll put the link okay. to the correct page. Okay. So as I said, uh, as I just told you about, there was a survey which has been, uh, the link of which has been put on this uh, three uh, Web Health in Action uh, platforms. And uh, about, I, I opened it for about one month and there were 69 participants who participated and uh, completed the survey. 
So what I did was, at the end of the survey, I asked uh, people demographic information about uh, their backgrounds. And I also asked whether they would be willing to get interviewed for further uh, for, for me to be able to further analyze this community. So people were kind, thanks God, and I ended up with 24 interviewees. And uh, the shortest interview was about 35 minutes, and the longest was almost two hours. Um, so the results. Uh, today I wanted to talk about uh, results in these four divisions. Uh, so the community, if you remember the triangle, the community part, the tools members use, and the norms or the culture of the community and the division of labor. Uh, so who the Red Hats are? Um, these 69 participants uh, who participated, uh, 46 of them were EFL, English as a foreign language teachers, uh, 13 English as a second language teachers, and 10 of them were not uh, EFL or ESL teachers. There were some of them were retired teachers, some of them were technology consultants, and some of them administrators in projects as they reported. Um, going on, uh, there are more females in the web has community than the males, as you can see in the numbers. Um, the number of non-natives is almost, well, not almost, but close to two times more than the native speakers. So there are more non-native web has uh, English speaking web hats than uh, native speakers, um, which is disparity? Is it gender? <laughs> well, <laughs> OK. Um, so they are teaching, uh, the, the levels of teaching, the 44, generally web hats uh, members of the web has community are teaching in higher education. So 44 people have chosen that, uh, that they reported they are teaching in a university or college level. 15 of them uh, have chosen, uh, have selected that they are uh, teaching in high school or secondary school. You know, that changes from one country to another, but let's say this uh, middle, middle education, um, and then there were primary school teachers, which were just about five of them. Um, going along. So as you can see, uh, the web has, is, it's a diverse community. Uh, there are members, I didn't tell about that, but there are members from all over the world, from different parts of education, um, and we, different teaching experiences. I think there were a, there was a member, maybe not a teacher, but who didn't really have any teaching experience. And there was a member who was, who has been teaching 55 years. Well, at least that's what they reported. Um, so while it is a diverse community, it's also homogenous, a homogenous community in the sense that when I ask interviewees, uh, the interview participants, why they become part of this community, why they join, uh, almost all of them have reported that they wanted to learn about the use of technology, how to use technology in education, in teaching, and in particular in language teaching. So it's diverse, but at the same time, people with the same interest. Um, going along to the tools. So as I suggested, tools can be the language, which is the English at the moment we are using. But I tried to look into more from the perspective of these digital tools that allow us uh, to interact with each other. And people mentioned the use of the Yahoo group, 
uh, the platforms like the like what collaborate at the moment uh, or Google Hangouts. Uh, there were people who mentioned using Skype to, to communicate with other web hats, and there were a few members who mentioned Google Plus and Facebook group. As Teresa actually earlier mentioned, uh, there is this Facebook group of the web hats, but I imagine it's not very well known. Um, going on in details to the tools. So, uh, mainly people talked about the Yahoo group. And as you can see in the quotations I have provided, uh, the Yahoo group is perceived to be the main channel where sort of the interaction goes. Uh, if people uh, have any questions, that's where they go. And, uh, and also it is perceived to be, it's perceived to be easy to use and practical. Okay, going ahead. And then there is learning together. Well, uh, here is an interesting card because this feeling, well, at the moment, unfortunately, my camera is not working, but if it, if you suppose it was working, then you would have been able to see me at the same time, uh, you are able to see my slides and this, for some members uh, provide a sort of a real feeling, a feeling for the community and it's strong thing. However, having these learning together sessions uh, sometimes can be problematic for some members. Uh, people reported that the date, like Sunday, uh, can be a problem for them since it's a family day for some people, uh, since it's a holiday for some, because teaching is already taking a lot of time and I guess all of us need some time off. Uh, but yeah, the date, the date and the timing, as we suggested, uh, web has are all over the world and it's 12, 30 at the moment for me, and I guess it's for Mike about 11 o'clock in the evening, just before midnight. So that can be that can be problematic from time to time from uh, for other members. And is there a question? I'm not sure. I heard this. Place. Yeah, I, I raised a hand. Uh, just uh, let people know who might be listening. We can be yeah. flexible on the date, on the day. I mean, sometimes we do it on Monday or Tuesday. Yeah. Uh, so we have other times. So if any, anybody wants to put on a learning together session, they're quite welcome to do it. Even if it's while I'm asleep, we could certainly set it up for them. So mm -hmm. you know, we, we do try to be flexible, but in practice, hardly anybody else uh, Hosts one. I mean, it usually involves me. So, but people are welcome to do it. We certainly like to get the recordings and hear other people's voices at different times. So, if you're listening to this recording because you can't be with us because you're asleep right now, then <laughs> there's your there's a message for you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, that was just exactly what I was going to say. Actually, Vance Vance has uh, explained to me that. Uh, we can be flexible uh, in these times and days, as he explained just now uh, to everyone. Um, but I also uh, heard from people that uh, when they miss it, they, if provided that they have the time, they try to catch up and uh, listen to the recordings uh, of those events. Um, going on. Um, That's nice to know. Thanks for that information. Uh, yeah. Okay, so uh, Skype. Um, I will come to that topic later on, but uh, based on how much a member has posted in the community, uh, I have categorized them into active members, core members, or lurkers. Uh, but that's not the topic of today, so I'll just shortly give that information, but people who seem to be, uh, who, who I categorize in the core member or active member category, uh, I have heard that 
they prefer using Skype. And again, again, this ease of use practicality being the very reason for selection of that. And here is a code uh, that that person is uh, using the Skype uh, since since she perceives it to be easier than any other means and uh, possibly quicker since it is instant chat, instant messaging. Um, uh, I'm, I might mention uh, one thing, yeah. one nice affordance of Skype is setting up a text chat which kind of stays open. Um, you know, people can just add to it as they, we, we've had them for different purposes, but Google Hangouts does the same thing. That is, there are three kinds of Hangouts. One is the Hangout on Air, which is yeah. supposed to, is recorded on YouTube, and another kind is just a video chat, which may or may not be recorded. And then there's a text hangout as well. All of these are associated. I mean, if you open a hangout on air, you get a text hangout as well. A lot of people don't really see it until a couple of days later. They, they notice it on their screen. But that's the same kind of thing where you can interact. Once you've got one of those open, then the people in that text can keep it open for days or months or years, theoretically. And you can just kind of converse in that chat. It's kind of a back channel. Skype used to do the same thing. You could open up a Skype group, and then uh, you'd have it. I've, I've seen them open for years. You know, uh, Earth Day, for example, plans year after year. Yes, go ahead. Mm -hmm. I think it's uh, limited. The number of people you can have in Skype is limited, as far as I know. I'm I'm not sure, but are you talking about the conferencing, Skype conferencing? No, I'm talking about the text chat. That uh, oh, if you okay. open a group. Yeah, not not talking. Okay. Uh, yeah, not not talking uh, okay. uh, simulcasting or yeah, mm -hmm. not synchronously talking, but okay. just once you open the chat and you make a group, it can stay open uh, and can stay open for a long time. For, you know, it can be functional for weeks. Okay, uh, didn't know that. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so actually. I only heard uh, the use of, well, I, he I heard that people prefer Google Plus web has group or Facebook web has groups only from one member in each, that they prefer Google Plus. One person prefers Google Plus to Yahoo and uh, or to other tools, and then another was preferring Facebook. Uh, and both for the same reason, a reason actually that they considered Google Plus and Facebook to be visually more appealing since it provided uh, the sharing of uh, possibly pictures, videos, and etc. Uh, but also some members mentioned that uh, there is no interaction going on on these two groups, Google Plus and Facebook, that is usually people would look into those two for uh, checking the announcements of coming uh, coming events. Um, that's a good point, and one that you know we, the the, the uh, web has an action Yahoo group was started uh, twelve years ago. Yeah. So that's it's by habit that we have been using it, and it's been very productive. It's there are over a thousand members in that group. Uh, at least there are a thousand names listed. I'm not sure if half those names could be bouncing, but I'd certainly like to encourage people to use the Google Plus community more. It's got about 100 members in it, 93 I think, mm -hmm. and uh, the Facebook group. Um, we, it, it's open. I, I post learning together events in both of those spaces, and I do yeah. notice that they're they're underused. So it'd be nice to get more interaction in those places. Mm -hmm. I actually want to ask you a question, Vince. I think you were the one who mentioned that you find Google Plus communities uh, as good for community building. And uh, at the time of the interview, I didn't really uh, think about it uh, and went into in detail. But why do you think Google Plus allows, uh, or, or is your would be your preference these days for? Um, for community building, what are the advantages, kind of, you think? Well, I think what I might have said was that I notice uh, when I 
announce in Google Plus, I get uh, usually get interaction. Uh, I'm a member of several communities, but um, I do I I notice that conversations start there. For example, if you start a hangout, then uh, people get invitations, and people are likely to come back into the conversation and converse there. So a lot of times, when you start an event, uh, you get conversations around those events, and that doesn't really happen in uh, at least not with us in Facebook. Um, it it may not happen at all in Yahoo groups. People I post to Yahoo groups and people don't really comment about what we do. They comment on other things, which is fine. But you know, if you want interaction around uh, uh, an event, I just find that Google uh, communities is uh, is the one that seems to me to get the most interaction and the most traction. Um, even Twitter is another one. You might Twitter gets more. Interaction around our events than, um, than than the other places possibly an equal amount with Google Plus communities and Twitter. We get interaction. We get re uh, responses from people. Thank you. I didn't know that. Uh, <coughs> okay, so there is this uh, third category, and I I hope I am not boring you. <laughs> uh, so in this norms category, people mention. Like I, say, I find this fascinating. This is fascinating. Really, it's really really nice. Thanks very much. Uh, thank you. Uh, so the norms. Um, so people mentioned uh, support, providing support to other members, but also getting support as a norm. Uh, being polite and respecting others, avoiding religious discussions, avoiding political discussions, and spamming. And surprisingly, there was uh, someone who perceived regular meetings as a norm. I think it's really taken for granted that there are these weekly gatherings. And, and I don't think many people thought of it as a norm or culture, but in fact, it is. It is that you get regularly together, which on some days uh, or any other day sometimes changes. But yeah. Um, so the support, uh, there are different types of supports people mention. So there's social support, which, uh, which relates to sharing emotions, successes, sadnesses, and even congratulating holidays of each other. Uh, to give a positive example is like people in this, in this nine months of data collection, I have observed uh, that people uh, regardless of what religion they are, they celebrated each other's, like let's say there are Christians, they celebrate each other's um, Christmas or for Muslims there is Eid, an Eid uh, holiday or even Hanukkah maybe. Uh, so there is this sort of uh, positive support coming from members. But there are also technical support. People respond. People ask for help in this community. And and in fact, uh, here is an example. Uh, it's from last year. And uh, a member shared this uh, message and asked for help. And actually, uh, this query was answered at, on the same day. And at the end of the next day, there were five different responses from different members who actually suggested different tools and sort of get involved in a discussion of the affordances of these tools. Um, and it's, it's quick, this help, people mention, this support, it comes quickly, like within. I think. Uh, I haven't confirmed it yet, but I checked it in my email because I received all these emails, each one of them to my email, and I checked the timing of when a request was sent and when it was first replied. And I think it's always less than a day that you will get an answer. Um, going on. Uh, politeness and respect. So someone said politeness is at the top in this community and exemplified it with the use of dear, thanking, uh, showing gratitudes. Um, 
and maybe saying sorry, apologizing, and this sort of things, uh, which relates to politeness. And then there is this respect part. You know, people might not always be uh, agreeing on a topic or people, it's, it's so normal that people might have different ideas. Uh, and, and then there is this respect element, no matter what you think, you, you can disagree, but you can disagree in a sort of um, respectful way without breaking them. Okay. Well, I'd welcome comments from the group. I, I put it in the text chat. Maybe someone that could address the norm of meeting on Sundays. I remember one time that Michael posted. He'd, he'd gone to uh, Tapton and he posted to the group. It was the first time he'd been there since mm -hmm. we started using it, and there was nobody else there. And that was that's how normal it was. Um, we've Michael and uh, Maggie Doty. Uh, and I used to have a class uh, in an online space at the palace where we would meet on Sundays, I believe. I believe that was our meeting time. So that's how we we got to uh, meeting on Sundays. We just kind of kept that habit going. It was with a class of ESL students at the time, but uh, uh, EFL, I guess. But anyway, we we just uh, then once Tapton came along, we would all meet there, and then we would. That was our, our meeting point on Sundays. We would go there possibly without a pre-announced plan, but then we would tell people where we had gone, like it might be Second Life or something like that. So we would sort of organize around this space and go out and visit these spaces. And so just out of habit again, like the Yahoo group has been going on for 12 years, um, yeah. it's just kind of become habitual to meet somewhere on Sunday. And, uh, and when Michael, for example, noticed that no one was going to Tapton anymore, and then Tapton disappeared, um, yes. that's a, a, about that time I decided we needed a little oomph because we were sort of going informally and people were dropping off. Uh, they weren't really coming as often as they used to, so that's why I started learning together uh, yes. to give some to give the the meetings a focus, and uh, mm -hmm. that seems to have sustained things for uh, the last four years. Yeah. So that was just one thing. Help, yes, uh, there's quite a lot of help uh, in our group. I mean, we've got thousands of messages, five figures, I think, five figures of messages. And um, anyway, yeah. a lot of them are, are help. Yeah. O other people, uh, your voices, your uh, if you want to comment, please do. I think I'll there's a question mic. from Jose. Okay. Uh, well, well, I think Sunday, although some people say it's the day to stay with the family, but since we are a community of teachers, like Ali said, in six continents, I mean, sometimes Sunday is the only time we have, is the only time we can meet uh, synchronously, because uh, if it's another day, some of us are teaching, some of us are sleeping, okay, so I think Sunday, although it is a bit hard for some people, but it's, it's a day that we can meet, you know. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I guess uh, people every now and then come and go uh, to the Sunday session. Hi, Ali. It's Michael here. I just want to add that the time has changed. So it used to be a fixed time, and now we're learning together, which is wonderful. The times vary, so there's no longer a so the norm is that there's a weekly meeting. In fact, there's quite often more than one meeting in a week, but the times shift. So there's not a fixed time every week. Yeah. And just personally, that's why I find it difficult to take part as much these days because most of the sessions are beginning after midnight for me. Um, but, you know, I'm just one person amongst many. Yeah. Yeah, that was uh, one of the timing problems. I also heard from others. Um, anyway, going on. Um, so, avoiding political and religious discussions. Uh, it has been mentioned by many members. And in fact, uh, how to say it? Um, um, we can observe from the statistics I provided uh, that uh, 
this sort of rule works because um, because there are members from all over the world, uh, from different uh, views, with different views, with different religions, and uh, not touching on these issues sort of help. But I should add that there is this dimension where I was just earlier talking on this uh, celebrating religious holidays like Christmas and Eid. Uh, so people avoid discussing this uh, politic and uh, religion, but they seem to sort of use, for example, religion as a way to to contribute to the social aspect of the community and make this feeling of being together. Um, actually, uh, with regards to politics, a member has added and elaborated on the issue that. Um, I think I should have a quote about it, that politics would would be okay if it relates to the if it relates to the uh, objectives of the community, which is uh, education and teaching and learning. So I'll shortly let you to read this quote where it gives talks about. Uh, looks like we've been joined by Sebastian Panakai in uh, in uh, Cochin, Kochi, which is now called. So welcome. If you want to say hi, you can. Good evening, everybody. I'm in Cochin, Kerala. I'm interested in learning together. I'm 63 years old and uh, not a teacher, not a traditional teacher. I love connecting online. And uh, I also work as uh, a wiki educator in Kerala promoting connected learning. Thank you, Mitch. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Sebastian. Um, so, um, avoiding spamming, people said, well, I guess it's not really ex accepted anywhere that spamming is no good for the community. Uh, but thinking of this community has been around for the last 12 years, uh, and people only mention that issue, spelling issue, took place only one time. Uh, the example of which I'm sure all these people joining the session know, uh, that it happened only once. And this, this, I believe, in my perspective, makes this community one of those special communities. Um, just sort of justifies my selection of this community. Uh, so yeah, this spamming, it, it happened only once from what people told me in the interviews and it was dealt with, it was dealt with. Um, anyway, going on, regular meetings, uh, I think I talked about it earlier. Uh, so it, it, these regular meetings creates a rhythm for the community and also allows this interaction between the members. So it helps develop the community building uh, and, and the links between those members, which people mentioned actually that uh, that they created friendships after of this uh, these meetings, this, those interactions with members. Um, going on, uh, the last aspect uh, that I looked in was the division of labor, and when I asked people. Uh, if they have been assigned any roles, uh, people said they weren't aware of any assigned roles, and that which suggested that everything is done voluntarily. And then people talked about the leadership, and also talked about uh, people's contribution, 
such as the training opportunities uh, offered in the community, and also people trying to help each other when there are uh, when they share things, when they ask for information, etc. So. Um, as uh, once explained, uh, the contribution to this community is done on people's initiatives. Um, and then there is this idea of people who came, who learned from web hats, that they, because they have learned and they have gained, they sort of want to give back some of, uh, some of this and they, they want to contribute to the community. So that's why they sort of take on these different roles in the community and contribute to the success of the community. Um, leadership, so uh, core members and some of the active members uh, were perceived as leaders of the community. Uh, however, <laughs> I should mention that it was mainly when who was mentioned uh, and uh, what does Vance do? Uh, Vance, as we all know, uh, he maintains the learning together, uh, makes the announcements, uh, is the admin of the Yahoo, Facebook, and Google groups. Uh, but he mentioned, he mentioned that sometimes it can be really time taking and uh, Perhaps when one uh, might want to join in here, that he can use some help. Once, would you like to elaborate on this? Well, you've you've covered it very well. You know, people take initiatives, and that's uh, you know a very good example of an initiative is Teresa and her group, of which of whom uh, Jose has picked up the the mantle now. So there's an, another little. Group there that started out as webheads, uh, sorry, becoming a webhead that went on for about ten years in the EVO community, Electronic Village Online, and so whereas um, that's that's a good example of a distribution leadership initiatives, and I would say uh, if you ask if you did a study of web uh, becoming a webhead, you'd find that Teresa was probably most mentioned in that group, and then yeah. nowadays Jose, uh, you guys might want to mention your own. Uh, uh, contributions here, but uh, becoming a webhead has become IT for ELT. Uh, yeah. a, a, again, a session in Electronic Village Online, but now with Jose and, and another group. So there is a lot of help. Uh, Michael is always uh, willing to pitch in whenever you know we need anything. In fact, actually, he's just revealed we we need presenters for December, and he's revealed that. Um, he'd like to have uh, he, he'd like to come on a little earlier, so maybe we can get him to come on in December. And uh, so anyway, well, yes, and Teresa, sure, of course, you're very sweet too. And why don't you just say a word about that? You can talk a little bit about becoming a webhead and, and IT for ELT, which are essentially webhead splinter groups, or, or I should say, not really splinter. They're sort of percolating groups that is they they percolate people into webheads in action. Well, I don't think there's much to say about becoming a webhead or ball, as we used to call it, uh, although it did go on for 10 years and uh, it was a, a fabulous experience. It, we just started it, Daphne and I started it because uh, we thought that, we felt that many, several people uh, wanted to go back to basics, as we said at the time back in 2004 when we started uh, because they felt that the web heads were maybe evolving too fast and um, they just wanted, you know, simple tools for their uh, everyday work and, uh, you know, that's it. And, and when I look back on those 10 years, uh, I see that, you know, we got across to 3,000 participants in over a hundred countries, which I think is fabulous. And um, I think we changed some lives, some careers, let's say. Uh, and uh, that is just uh, amazing, you know. Uh, so I'm glad that uh, then we challenged our 
moderators, some of our moderators, among them JA, which always uh, collaborated with us in a fabulous way and for several years. And so uh, we challenged JA, Mbarak, and uh, others to follow on. And uh, they did with ICT for ELT. The only thing we asked them was not to use uh, the name, becoming a webhead, or the acronym, BO, because that was um, uh, very dear to our hearts. And when I say our, especially Daphne and me. Uh, and so, and that was it. Okay, over to you, JA. Uh, can um, I ask hello, quickly yeah. to, to Jose? Can I quickly ask? Um, um, so there is this ICT for ELT, which sort of is seen as a continuation of becoming a web has. Uh, but as far as I remember, uh, at the end of the session, there is no graduation. Like the becoming a web head, people were uh, sort of graduating and doing the being given the title, like oh you are now a web head and please come and join the web has community. Uh, but in ICT for ELT, is there such a thing, or do you do you guys uh, direct members to the web has in action community, or or how do you no. link between the two? Yes. Um, okay. What we do actually do uh, at the end of uh, of ICT for ELT in week five, we invite them to join the becoming a web heads community. We generally make a point of having Vance uh, do a presentation for us. Uh, this uh, this time around, we're we're going to we are doing the same. So because for us, learning together represents what LinkedIn. Uh, Captain, sorry, Captain used to be like a, a hangout place in um, on Sundays. Okay, I think what Vance has done is means it means a lot for the community of teachers because uh, because I mean the EVO sessions is like uh, it happens uh, just a month. So for the rest of the year, I mean we try to get people connected somehow, and that's what it does. Um, mm -hmm. About the becoming a webhead, uh, we owe a lot to to the community, to Therese and Daphne. And as Therese said, like they managed to inspire us. And so the moderators in ICT for your T, all of them have uh, took part in becoming a webhead. Mm -hmm. And uh, this time around, Larissa Olasova is not with us anymore because she's too busy. But two other um, People that were uh, moderators in becoming a web had uh, joined us in ICT for ELT with Mariana uh, from the from Croatia, I think Croatia. Yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. And um, and Sonia from the Czech Croatia. I, I forgot where she's from. Anyway, but so we uh, we and we have more people. Maybe you have more people from. Uh, becoming a web head. Uh, so, and I mean, the spirit of respect and collaboration is really important. And uh, like Alice said, uh, we have disagreements, but we, uh, if you disagree, you disagree in a polite way, you know, respecting other people's opinions. And uh, basically, that's what I had to say. If you have any questions. Yeah, uh, do you think people who complete and finish the ICT for ELT, do you think they become members of the Web Hats in Action community? Or have you been able to spot any? Or any well, uh, we, don't, we don't really follow up on that. We invite them to join the community, and it's up to them, you know. Uh, and, and I mean, we don't follow up on that, but I think some of them do. Okay. Yeah, I asked this because uh, because uh, some members mentioned becoming a web head as sort of a method or a way of sustaining the community in the sense that uh, in the sense that uh, more new blood people use this term, fresh blood or new blood that that. There are new members joining the community and integrate, being integrated, and etc. Uh, okay, I will. Yeah. Go, no, go ahead. 
Okay, uh huh. Oh, no, I just read Rita's comment that if I can speak a bit louder, uh, uh, I hope it is better now, is it? I yeah, guess. I think we're speaking evenly, so I've been turning the mic volume up, uh, sorry, the, the speaker volume up and down as I've been listening. Um, <laughs> I wanted to say that there, that uh, Stephen Downs, one of my heroes, uh, philosopher heroes, is, uh, it makes the distinction between groups, networks, and communities. And this is actually what I was getting at in my first question that I asked was, you know, how do you know who is a webhead? Because um, yeah. we're, we, we definitely have our communities. And, and I suppose when you've, when you've got an ICT for ELT or a BOW uh, and, and steering people towards a community like webheads, that's mm -hmm. one way to do it, but there's also the network. You know, if, if people come up from ICT for ELT, they might interact with us in our networks. They might become yeah. interested in learning together, let's say, or they'll, you know, or, or we'll encounter them in the global education conference or something like that. You know, we have a lot of people who aren't really, you know, you can't really say uh, if they're web eds, but they, they might even consider themselves web eds, but not really be aware of the Yahoo group. You know, so yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah, so you're feeding into the community and uh, not uh, the network into the network, and um, that's you know a stronger tie in some ways than communities. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. But uh, I, I see your point. But for me, it would have been really difficult to be able to like like you mentioned this before. It would be really difficult for me to get hold of those people because I don't know who they are. Uh, of course, who does? So, but, but, yeah, <laughs> but you meet them. I, I see your point. Yeah. I, I, I've told people sometimes that being a webhead is like being a hippie. You know, when, when <laughs> I was in the 60s, you could be in a crowded theater, let's say, and if you saw another hippie, you would eyes and make contact. You know, you knew who they were, but uh -huh. without really being a card-carrying member, you know, so <laughs> webheads are like that. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so going ahead, uh, conclusion. Well, I haven't really come to a conclusion so far because I'm still analyzing the data, uh, but I just wanted to sort of give a summary of what I have found so far. What I will do next is going to go and look into more details of the differences uh, between different membership levels. So as I talked about earlier, uh, there are people who I consider as lurkers, there are people who are active and core members. Uh, so I will try and look into detail of the answers provided by the different members. And hopefully I will end up creating a coherent story from the findings. That's my problem at the moment. Uh, well, not my problem, but that's one of the critics that have been uh, thrown at me uh, by my supervisor. So let's see, I don't know. Um, I wonder if, thank you very much for listening and coming today again. I wonder if uh, anyone has any questions or any points that they would like me to, cl to clarify. Or what do you think of my interpretation so far? I just want to thank you, Ali, for giving us the opportunity to live again our experiences. Uh, you know that uh, Webheads in Action is a great community, and you have uh, really awakened all this spirit that uh, really takes it uh, ahead. And, and, and the, the spirit of the Webheads is always there, and you have refreshed it in this history. So. Uh, thank you very much. It was really a pleasure, first of all, uh, taking part in this uh, interview and, and now being together again, reliving our experiences. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you, and, Rita. Uh, everybody. Oh, it's been a pleasure. Thank you, guys. Thanks to all of the participants who joined my study that I will hopefully be able to finish my PhD. So I should be the one thanking you. <laughs>
Oh, uh, Sebastian just made a very interesting point. It just uh, alerted me to something interesting. So I'm not sure if Sebastian considers himself a webhead. He's here in a learning together session. And in his last message, he said he mentioned Hello Little World. Uh, it's a Skype group. Now, Maria Colusa uh, is a member of Hello Little World on her Skype uh, page. Maybe, maybe Sebastian knows Maria better than us. I don't really know. But Maria, interestingly, I noticed the other day when I'm looking in my Google, uh, uh, I've, I've put her in the circle for multiple literacies. That means that she came to me, I think, through multiple literacies. And I don't have her in, uh, yes, and, and Sebastian does know her. So this is the network effect I'm talking about. It's a good il illustration of it. So I'm not sure if Maria or Sebastian consider themselves webheads or multiliteracies, or I, I just uh, did a presentation with Maria in the GEC conference recently. We invited somebody named Maha to join us, whom we've been meeting up with in World Bridges events. I have a question, things like that. So these people are kind of, in fact, our, our talk was about that, was kind of about the uh, the chemistry behind that, uh, that sort of phenomenon, where um, you don't really know where, where people are actually coming from. Maybe Sebastian would like to address uh, how it is, because it seems that uh, he said, I do. He does know Maria. So that, maybe what, what brings you here, Sebastian? Through a Google message of Maria, she told me about this group, and I was interested. I really like connecting with people and learning from them, that's how I came across. But Hello Still World has a, a Skype group, a 24-hour chat group, it seems. So there is someone to connect with and clarify a doubt or get some help or even a shoulder to cry on any time he needs. So for me, a Skype group might help uh, in there will be better uh, deeper connections among the members. We help each other. In fact, uh, we have a member called Stu Sherman of Living Man. And uh, he initiated a conversation with uh, different leaders in the field. And a couple of months ago, there was a math magician's chat. by Imagination Foundation, where I too participated with Maria, etc. So just because we are active, people find us out now and ask us to your say, opinion or some support or whatever, tech support mostly. But a group like, like that, is there a, say, a wiki, the details of numbers are given could help because all Skype names of all our members are there. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, everyone. Uh, any questions? I can take any questions. I just Googled uh, Math Magician Chat Imagination Foundation and came up with this link. And I see that Sebastian has provided another. So there, there's an interesting thing. And we've got um, David Wexler, who often joins us. He's a mathematician. Uh, I wanted to ask uh, about, uh, let me go back a couple of slides here. The, uh, is it this one or? Uh, this one, yeah. The, the third point, lurkers versus active and core members. Yeah. That, that there's so many, you know, who's a lurker, who's an active, who's a core member? How, how do you define uh, those? Um, well, it is, uh, there is not enough literature that would really make us differentiate between the two. And, and uh, again, in the literature, when I checked, there are members who can move to becoming a, from lurker to being an active member and then core member. 
uh, and then at the same time, depending on their aims, whether they have achieved their uh, objectives and etc., those members might shift between those cycles. So. Uh, if we think of it as a circle, the outsider are workers, and then towards the center, then you have got the active members and then core members. Uh, so people can move between different times. People may be moving between, between different cycles of these membership levels. Uh, so what I did was I collected nine months of data, and this is for that particular study. And I'm not sure how applicable it would be for other studies, but in my study, what I did is, uh, so I break it into three months message cycles. So I got three from October to January, then from January to April, and then from May to June. So like three month cycles. And I counted how many messages in each cycle a member has posted. And then I calculated the average message uh, per person. So people who, uh, people who posted more than the average in at least two of these times, I considered them to be important and uh, sort of the core members. And then people who posted uh, less than the average, but still kept posting uh, as active members. And then people who sort of never posted, uh, I categorize them as workers. But again, this is open to debate and uh, it's some sort of a limitation I would be acknowledging. And it might not be applicable to other studies. Uh, was that clear, this formula I used? I'm not sure if my English is good enough to explain it all, but... Yes, an algorithm is a good answer to a question like that. Yeah. If that makes some kind of distinction. Yeah, so that's how... So And, and something that I forgot to add is... Uh, so in this survey, I actually ask people uh, on a Likert scale, I ask people of their perceived knowledge about the use of technology. Uh, so I gathered up the results and compared it between these different membership status. Uh, and I don't really know what it means, but there is a significant difference between lurkers' perceived uh, ability to use technology uh, compared to the active and core members. So there wasn't really a difference between active and core members. They perceived their knowledge to be more or less the same when I compared the results. But there is a difference between lurkers towards the degree that lurkers perceive themselves to know less about the use of technology. Uh, as I said, I don't really know the meaning of that as yet. And that's why I wanted to go and look into more detail to the interview answers of lurkers and these other two groups. Uh, hopefully, I might be able to find something there, but we shall see. Yeah, that's that's interesting. And, and the lurkers, it's surprising to me that they would self-report, because if they're lurking, they're not really filling out questionnaires. But that's an interesting uh, line of inquiry. Any other comments on that? Sorry, did, do you want me to rephrase No, that? I just asked, no, any other comments maybe, if people want, ah, yes. um, or any other questions? Well, it looks like we're uh, losing people. We still, uh, Rita, nice to see you. She's leaving, bye, off to the river. <laughs> thank you, thank you, you very much, She's Rita. Going sailing. I bet she's going sailing today. <laughs> Thank you very much for coming. Maybe, maybe Bans, <laughs> the sun is shining today, so it's a good opportunity. Thank you very much, and have a good Sunday, everybody. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye. Summertime for Michael and Rita. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah, okay, well, thanks, Michael.
summertime for me as well once, I guess. I mean, it's always tropical in there. And it's always yeah, winter in right. here in the UK. <laughs> <laughs> yep. You can have it. Uh, I'm okay, bored well. <laughs> I well, mean, it's born of the weather in the UK. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so, well, we've been talking to Ali Bustangioglu, sorry, and um, he's done a research project on whether it's in action for his PhD dissertation. It's an active research project, as you can see, uh, because he's come back into our community and reported the results uh, to the people that he has uh, interviewed and, and studied, and we're very appreciative of that. And um, he's got a ways to go on his dissertation. He's going to do a deeper analysis. Uh, and uh, he's promised to come back, I think you have, and uh, yeah. fill us in on the, on the additional details. It's nice to meet Sebastian as well. Sebastian, uh, yeah, anyway, good to, good to meet people from uh, across our networks. And this Thank is, you very uh, much for everyone. Yeah, it's, it's Sunday, the 23rd of November, and this is a learning together session. And uh, what is an action session and a hello little world session. So there's all kinds of things going on here. So thanks very much. I guess we've been recording for a little over an hour now. Yeah. And I certainly appreciate it. It's always nice to talk to you, Ali. Oh, thank and, you. Uh, it's so nice to talk to all of you. <laughs> And hopefully you'll be back uh, again. And I don't mind. It's really actually, thank you, Vance, for uh, trying to convince me to keep the session when I actually had, uh, I wasn't sure oh. whether I should do it or not. But thank you. Uh, yeah, I'm glad right. that I came. <laughs> I'm yeah, glad I'm glad that you I did. Too. <laughs> I think you got some very yeah. significant results, actually, mm -hmm. and you've really uh, characterized our community and what you've, uh, you know, yeah. what you've come up with. That's, that's mm -hmm. thing. So hopefully, I'll keep on, and we'll be we will be in touch, and we shall see. Okay. 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 Hi to Halima from Uzbekistan. She has just joined us, but we're just leaving, so maybe we've got a little time off. But I'm glad you're here in uh, uh, Illuminate because uh, she was having trouble reaching us, I think, with the GEC conference. So we're, the way this goes at the end of a session is I'll switch off. When, when things go silent for a little while, I'll switch off the recording. And uh, everyone has to leave. I have to be the last one out. So I'm the session leader at this point. And so if people are, do not leave, I'll eject you. That means you've gone to sleep at the computer or something like that. So we need to invite everyone to leave because we need to clear the room so that the, the recording uh, takes. And uh, Alima, welcome. I'm glad you were able to come. There's a recording, so I'll make sure you get the link to the recording. I'll put it in, in Skype. And of course, we'll post this to <coughs> learningtogether.net and document it there. So now it's just me and Halima, and I'm going to say good night because we have to get the recording. Good night. I'll turn off the recorder. Uh, um, do you want to say anything, Halima? Could give you a last word if you'd like. Okay, well, I'm going to stop the recording. <laughs>